What are some of the root causes? Like if you were to summarize, you know, the patterns that are pretty common in these different expert witness cases and or situations where we go into a client and help them get a project back on track because it's failed and maybe it's not a lawsuit yet, but they'll hire us to come in and basically recover the project. In both sets of clients that you've been involved with, what would you say are the, sort of the major <clears throat> patterns or themes yeah. that contribute to the failure in general? And we may talk about this later, but uh, we don't typically see the technology itself as a key point of, of friction. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the systems that get selected can handle 99% of everything that, that a company wants it to do uh, with a few tweaks here and there. Uh, and having taught uh, undergraduate and graduate classes in project management, it's, it's interesting that some of these complex multi-million dollar projects come down to the fundamentals of how a project should be run. Uh, almost every client uh, wants to get the system live as fast as possible. They skip the most important point uh, or phase of the project is the planning and making sure that what is the definition of success, right? What are we actually expected to achieve at the end of this project? Um, making sure that you have a, a feasible pace of the project. Uh, many times they want to replace legacy systems plus process changes plus new functionality they don't have. And even at the very beginning, that's a three plus year project. Well, I don't know what's gonna happen next week, but I promise it's gonna be different than what I'm thinking. But if you plan out a, a three year project, expect that it's gonna take a lot of different left turns. Uh, mm -hmm. And so the longer the project, the less likely you're gonna stay on track. If you go into it with too much expectation, you put too much on the plate of the system integrator and your own team, uh, likely to be a failure. Uh, but it's interesting that even in the world of, of agile methodology and a lot of software development firms want to use that concept, it doesn't mean there shouldn't still be rigor. And one thing that we find, uh, even when clients hire us to help from a PMO standpoint on an active project, very little documentation and very little updating of that documentation is our first big sign that something is wrong. Because if we get onboarded on a new project, in fact, we have a, an active project right now. It's a global multi-year, multi-million dollar project. Um, and we come in, the easiest thing for us to assess is give us all your documentation of where you are today. And if the answer is, well, we don't have too much documentation or here's a document. We, we created it two years ago. We just haven't updated it yet is our first big indication that something's off already because there's no way that the client team, the system integrator really understands where you are in the project uh, and what, again, that end state is. Um, mm -hmm. I think that uh, uh, clients that don't have the expertise in this area still tend to want to engage with the system integrator directly. And and yeah. you're, you're at a disadvantage at that point if you don't really know how to implement a, an enterprise system uh, and yet you're hiring somebody that is the software vendor sometimes themselves to run it entirety in, entirely, it tends to create problems of accountability. Mm -hmm. And we, we talk about this a lot in project management of traceability of the project. So what was the original intent of the project? What was identified as requirements and approved by all parties at the beginning of the project? How does it move through configuration, testing, and deployment with test scripts and test scenarios and user stories? There isn't many times a traceability from the beginning and end that's easy for somebody like us, if we're hired midstream, to understand where we are. And so when we get hired as a legal expert, the first thing we ask the legal team is give us access to all, as you mentioned, videos, demos, uh, documents, whatever it is. And it's it, when it, if, if we get started in that and it's very hard to start piecing things together, even at the very beginning, you know, the hair on the back of our neck starts raising uh, right. because it's, it's just difficult for anyone in a big enterprise system to be able to understand where things are in flight if things aren't properly documented around the way. Uh, and I, I, I speak about this a lot to our clients is that rarely is one methodology, waterfall or agile, ideal for a enterprise system. It's usually a hybrid form, 
but the problem is a lot of uh, technology firms that implement systems use this concept of agile to get away from being uh, required to document a lot of stuff. And that's a problem. Yeah. 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 I think in the, in this, the spirit of agile, you know, of moving fast and not slowing things down, not uh, having a lot of red tape on your project in that intent, a lot of times what happens is you end up with a lack of direction and, and the project ends up going off the rails because you don't have clarity and documentation and alignment on right. what exactly it is we're, we're trying to build. Right. Um, what's always interesting is when attorneys first contact us, a lot of times what they say is, hey, we want to hire an expert like third stage to come in and really analyze the code. Um, a lot of times that's the, the lawyers will say, hey, we want to analyze the code and really get in and, and show how it was a basically poor workmanship in the way that the software was built and deployed. And usually what happens is you start asking why, like, why, why do you want to look at the code? Because usually, you know, that's, that's not going to be a winning argument typically in, in cases like these, it's going to be to your point, all the other stuff. It's going to be the way the project was managed, the way you aligned the business processes or not with the software and vice versa. And in, you know, usually the software itself, quote unquote works, but it doesn't work for the business. And that's usually where the rub is or where the, where the challenge is. We do occasionally get a, a legal expert or, excuse me, expert witness uh, case the, where the software vendor oversold what the platform can do at day one. Uh, you know, vaporware, it's on the roadmap kind of thing. Uh, and that's usually the extent that the software itself doesn't match the requirements it has, is that there's functionality that was oversold. And it never became part of the project because it took the software vendor too long to develop that along the way. But rarely, to your point, it's the nitty gritty. Let's look at the code. Let's look to see how they've logged uh, uh, what they're doing in the comments in a, in a code uh, stream. Rarely do we need to get to that level because it's really that's the reason a system failed or an implementation failed. Right. Yeah, great point. 